The UFC 287 Pahaya vs Adesanya 2 is coming up this weekend. Before we get into it, I will be doing a uh, fight companion for the card. Really looking forward to live streaming during the card. My fight companions are usually pretty fun, I think. <laughs> and uh, before we get into it again, I'm also part of the We Want Picks team. So you can see there, I'm now on the We Want Picks team. I'm going to be adding my own premium content to the already existing we Want Picks premium content, so you'll get my premium content, as well as the We Want Picks premium content, such as their bets, their parlays, their line tracker, you get the bet alerts as well when they place bets, early picks, um, DFS, DraftKings, it's all there, and you're going to get premium content from myself as well, and uh, that's going to be great too, so I'm really happy to be part of the We Want Picks team. If you want to sign up and just get a trial and see what's going on, you can use my code ARTEM when you sign up to wewantpicks.com slash premium, you'll get a three-day free trial, and then from there you can decide if you want to become a member. And then on top of that, I've got my Bet Your West link. You want to get 125% deposit sign-up bonus. You can go forward and do that. Now, let's get straight into the picks. I'm sorry, it was a long intro, but I'm finally in the We Want Picks team. I'm really happy about that. Very, very happy to be part of the We Want Picks team. So, um, that'd be cool. It is rumored that Michael Chiesa versus Queen Buckley will be on this card. I don't know how true that is, but there's rumors going around, so I might um, have different picks in a couple of days. But let's get into the fight. Let's go with Sam Hughes versus Yaquilin Amaram. Yaquilin Amaram, uh, six wins, six finishes, I believe all in the first or the second round. Most of them in the first round. All of them in the first round. Very good grappler, very good striker as well, but mostly she gets it done in the BJJ. She's a world-class grappler. She gets you down and subs you almost immediately. Sam Hughes is kind of one of those girls that the UFC uses to test you, and if you're good, you're going to get past Sam Hughes, but if you're not, Sam Hughes is going to beat you. So she got uh, lost to Rodriguez, but she beat Reed, she beat Estella Nunes, and Pinero managed to get past her as well, and so did Loma Lukbumi. So Sam Hughes is kind of one of those girls that if you beat her, you're going to go on to do good things, but if you lose, then, you know, you're not really going to be ready for the top 15 of the UFC, you know what I mean? So... I've got Amarim uh, by sub as well. I don't know if she'll get it done in the first because Hughes is tough, but I definitely think she's going to get a submission probably within the first two rounds, and it's going to be a fun fight to start the night. The next one is Steve Garcia versus Shaylan Nerdenbeki. Both of these guys are wrestler grapplers for the most part, really, but I do think Shaylan Nerdenbeki should be able to get it done over Steve Garcia in this matchup. Steve Garcia, he's really chinny, dude. <laughs> like, um, I think maybe Shaylan might be able to get a KO as well, like... He got knocked out by Mahashate badly, but he got knocked down by Charlie Ontiveros twice, I believe. Luis Pena managed to take him to a decision, but dude, Steve Garcia's chin is very in question. He looked incredible on the feet against Chase Hooper, but that was a weird fight. I don't know how much stock you put into that. And the same thing is with Shay Lan's last fight. How much stock do you put into his win over Minna? Minna went into that injured, and obviously we've had the court case, and well, not really the court case situation, but the legal situation go on with James Krause and Glory MMA and all that, but he looked good against TJ Brown. Um, out grappled TJ Brown at times, looked good on the feet against TJ Brown. There's a really good chance Sherry Linus gets a KO on the feet over Steve Garcia, but I think we're going to see a lot of wrestling and grappling in this fight, and I like Shay Lan kind of everywhere the fight goes. I like Shay Lan uh, in the fight, but... Steve Garcia is chinny. You could see him get KO'd on the feet, and I wouldn't be that surprised if it happened. We've got a short notice fight here. Trey Ogden stepping in for Nicholas Mota against Ignacio Bahamondes. And I've got Ignacio Bahamondes with a decent amount of confidence. I'm a big, big fan of Ignacio Bahamondes. I think he's going to style on the feet against Trey Ogden, dude. Trey Ogden was looking pretty bad on the feet against Jordan Levitt, and then he outstruck Daniel Zalhuber, so we don't really know how good he is at striking, but... What Trey Ogden is, is a black belt in BJJ. Um, he's a really good grappler. He's not the best at getting the fight to the mat. Ignacio Bahamondes is not going to try and take you to the mat. He is going to try and strike with you. And that's what he thinks he's going to do. I think he's actually going to strike with Ogden for three rounds. He might be able to get a finish, but I'm not 100% sure if he can. I'm going to go with Ignacio by decision. But it's going to be fun. Like, Ignacio is going to be throwing spinning kicks and, like, you know, probably spinning back fist and elbows and all sorts of stuff on the feet. Because he's fun. I think his fight, his fight against um, not Mata would have been more fun. But uh, I think Mahamondes gets it done here. He's got the height advantage. He's got the reach advantage. He's huge for the division. He doesn't have to make 155 because Ogden wanted to fight at 160. I like that. I like Mahamondes here. I'm not 100% sure if he can get the KO over Trey Ogden. But Ogden's a tough dude. He's been subbed a few times before. But I don't see Ignacio submitting the black belt in Ogden. So 
We'll move on from that one there. Uh, Cynthia Calvillo taking on Lupita Godinez is the next one here. And I'm going with Lupita Godinez, but I will not trust Lupita Godinez at minus 270 at all. Lupita Godinez, she could have beaten Angela Hill, but she just didn't. Like, she just chose not to, pretty much. Because she was taking Angela Hill down, or she took Angela Hill down, and then Angela Hill kind of just got up, and then she just decided that she wasn't going to take Angela Hill down anymore. So she just chose to lose to Angela Hill on the feet. So you can't trust that at all. Um, but Calvillo, man, she's been on a big downward slope. You know, she just uh, lost to Nina Nunez. She lost to Andrea Lee by corner stoppage, but she took the fight a pretty fast after she, she lost to Jessica Andrade. Like, she shouldn't, shouldn't have done that, to be fair. She lost to Caitlin Chukagian. No shame in that, though, to be fair. But I'm picking Lupita Godinez. Uh, Galvillo is a really good grappler. She's not so good on the feet. Godinez is okay on the feet. She's a pretty good grappler herself, but... Minus 270, um, I'll, I don't think I'll ever trust Lupita Godinez again. I didn't have money on her against Angela Hill, but just after that fight, I just I just don't know what Lupita Godinez is up to. Eh? We move on, Gerald Mearshart taking on Joseph Pfeiffer. I've got Joseph Pfeiffer by KO here, but Gerald Mearshart is going to be a live underdog because he's just like, he's just that guy, you know what I mean? But um, I think Pfeiffer gets the KO. I'm really impressed by Pfeiffer. I picked against them, against Ozzy Diaz. I thought Ozzy Diaz was going to beat Pfeiffer, and Pfeiffer just KO'd him brutally in the second round. And then I picked him to beat Amadovsky, obviously, and he got a ton. But Pfeiffer's looking good, man. Like, outside of the UFC, he just outgrappled Eric Anders pretty easily. Showed really good grappling there. He's going to want to keep this fight to the feet. I don't think he's going to have any interest in taking um, GM3 down at all. But if GM3 gets it to the ground, it could be very interesting, because we just saw Pfeiffer... As I said, grapple with Eric Anders. We know Pfeiffer's got power on the feet. We know he can land bombs. Gerald Mearshart, I think it's kind of time we stop saying that GM3's got no chin. You know what I mean? He kind of just took a massive shot against Kamzat Shemaev. And, um, you know, everyone has said he's got no chin. Like, he's beating good guys. He just beat Vatos Vidvinsky. But Markman Muradov was a surprise to everyone. Um, and also Bruno Silva was a surprise to everyone. GM3 just beats the prospects. You know what I mean? I've got uh, Pfeiffer by KO in this matchup. I think he gets it done. The next one is not Chase Sherman versus Chris Barnett. Chase Sherman has... Uh, sorry, Chris Barnett has pulled out. So it is actually Chase Sherman taking on a man that just fought very recently in Carl Williams. Which I didn't prepare. I should have prepared a little bit earlier. But Carl Williams is a wrestler. He's been in the UFC. He just won against Lukas Brzezinski recently. Looked pretty good there. He beat Jimmy Lawson on short notice. Looks pretty good there. He's a wrestler. He's a massive favorite. I think best fight odds posted minus 550 for Carl Williams. I don't know how I feel about those odds, but I think Carl Williams definitely gets it done. I've got Carl Williams, and I do have Carl Williams probably by ground and pound TKO. He's got very good wrestling. He's pretty brutal when he's on top. Chase Sherman's a boxer, and that's kind of all he is. You know what I mean? He's not really much more than just a boxer. So I've got Carl Williams by like ground and pound TKO. Maybe a submission, even though he's never got a submission in his career, but that's how Carl how Williams to beat Chase Sherman. We move up the card. Michelle Waterson Gomez taking on Luana Pinero. I'm picking Luana Pinero. I don't feel that good about it, though. Like, her last win was over Sam Hughes, and then before that, she beat Randa Marcos, but she won by disqualification, and, you know, like, this, it wasn't that good of a look because she just kind of took the easy way out. <laughs> She was on top of Randa Marcos. Randa Marcos threw an up kick at her when she was on the ground to her face. And then Luana Pinero, I think, asked her corner or asked the ref, will I win by disqualification? And she just kind of accepted the DQ loss. It was a weird situation. It was odd. Um, obviously, got no, no issue with her doing that. Like, I think if anyone was in a situation, they would just take the DQ win, not going to lie. But it was just a weird situation that it, how it happened. Michelle Watterson Gomez is a good striker, but she's been looking on her wrestling and grappling recently, which is interesting. Pinero is pretty savage. Um, she's got quite a few finishes in her career. She won on Dana White's Contender Series and looks pretty good. I mean, she won in two and a half minutes, pretty much. A lot of first-round finishes. I don't know if she's going to be able to finish Michelle Watterson Gomez. But I've got her to win. I think she wins the fight, but it'd be interesting. Because uh, Michelle Watterson, she's a veteran, you know what I mean? She's fought a lot in her career, so it'd be interesting to see what she can do against uh, Pinero. 
And a line that has flipped. Uh, Chris Curtis was the favourite for a long time, and now Calvin Gastelum is the favourite. And uh, I'm really considering uh, maybe putting some money on Chris Curtis as the dog, you know what I mean? Because I'm picking Chris Curtis in this matchup. It's not that I don't think Calvin Gastelum has the skills to win. It's just that I just don't trust Calvin Gastelum at all. Like, I don't know... What's up with old mate Calvin Gastelum, you know? I've got Chris Curtis here. I think that Calvin Gastelum has the tools to beat Chris Curtis. Absolutely, but he's pulled out of so many fights recently. And, you know, can we trust him to show up in shape? Like, I know he took these fights on short notice, so it's not that big of a knock. But he didn't really look in shape or look committed to the game in his last two fights. And that was in 2021. And he hasn't fought since then, and, like... Does Calvin Gastelum want to care? Does he care anymore? You know what I mean? I don't know if he does. And Chris Curtis, I know he does. He just got into the UFC. He's 35 years old. He's, this is his 40th pro fight of his entire career. He's finally just starting to make the big money because he's ranked now. I'm sure he'll be on a pretty decent contract, especially being good friends with Strickland and all that. So it's Chris Curtis's time to shine. You know, Chris Curtis is a good boxer. He's a good wrestler. He did lose to Jack Hermanson, but it's just because Jack Hermanson just didn't want to play Chris Curtis's game. And then, to be fair, he was getting outlanded by Joaquin Buckley, but then he landed a big shot and KO'd him. So, just kind of one of those situations. But I do have Curtis to win. Gastelum's got a, got a chin on him, though, man. And he hasn't fought in a long time, though, so maybe we do see a finish from Curtis. But I think Curtis wins by decision. In this matchup, I just don't trust Calvin Gastelum. Calvin Gastelum has the tools to win. Absolutely. But I just, I just don't know. I just don't know what he's going to look like. You know what I mean? It might be one of those situations where you pay close attention to, to the weigh-ins. We move up. Raul Rosas Jr. taking on Christian Rodriguez. I'm going with Raul Rosas Jr. And I do think he gets it done by decision in this one here. I think Christian Rodriguez is good enough to not get subbed by Raul Rosas. And I think Christian Rodriguez as well... If people just start blindly bidding Raul Rosas Jr. and Christian Rodriguez becomes a massive underdog, I think there could be opportunity there for C-Rod. Because C-Rod, I think he's underrated, man. I think, I really do believe Christian Rodriguez is underrated. He just beat um, Junior Cortez, who has gone on a win streak since then. He just beat Ryan McIntosh, which he just fought him on short notice. He was actually meant to fight a much better opponent. And then he fought on short notice Jonathan Pierce, upper weight class, and JSP is massive for 145. He's like five foot eleven or six foot or something, and a very good wrestler and grappler. And C Rod held his own in the wrestling and grappling in that fight, albeit then a much smaller guy on short notice. And then he just went out there and subs Joshua Weems. But Raul Rosas Jr. man, like Raul Rosas Jr. is 18 and he's a savage. You know what I mean? I just watched his brother fight as well. His brother Jesse Rosas just fought um, just this weekend, like yesterday at the time of recording. Looked amazing. He won the fight in 90 seconds by sub. And, like, you just know that, like, these Rosas family, the Rosas family's training hard. And I think Rosas Jr., man, he's a good fighter, dude. He's, he's really proven himself. He subbed Jay Perrin early in the, by Rene Kachoke. You know, Mario Batista took Jay Perrin to this distance, you know what I mean? And uh, he beat Mando Gutierrez. But Mando Gutierrez was kind of one of those fights which uh, Rosas Jr. was kind of meant to win. And uh, I say that, I said this in my in my Dana White's Contender Series breakdown as well. I said this is kind of like a hand-picked opponent for Rosas Jr. Because uh, Mando Gutierrez is a grappler, he doesn't have KO power, and Rosas Jr. is the better grappler. So he was meant to win that fight, and he did. He looked amazing, incredible in that fight. Looked amazing against Shea Perrin. Massive step up in competition for Ronaldo Sus Jr., but I do think he passes the test, and I think he passes the test by decision. I don't know if he's going to sub C Rod. He's going to be going for so many submissions, but I don't think he gets them. I think C Rod's a really good grappler himself. I don't think this is a a situation where Ronaldo Sus Jr. is going to run over him because Christian Rodriguez is a good fighter himself, but I think Ronaldo Sus Jr. is going to win. I'm not feeling the submission side. I'm thinking more decision here. You know what I mean? Just because. C Rod's good, you know. C Rod isn't going to get subbed by anything, so I'm, I'm going with Rosas Jr. by decision. The next fight is Kevin Holland taking on Santiago Ponzinibbio. I've got Kevin Holland. Um, I'm not, I don't share the same amount of uh, confidence as a lot of people will do, though. I'm seeing Kevin Holland being thrown up in a lot of parlays. I'm seeing a lot of money going on Kevin Holland, and uh, I think he's going to win. I'm picking Kevin Holland to win, but I wouldn't like. 
rely on Kevin Holland a lot in this fight. I know Kevin Holland just fought Steven Thompson, but you got to consider he took a lot of damage in that fight. And didn't he retire between the fourth and the fifth round because he broke his hand or something? Am I correct in saying that? That was three months ago, you know? Like, I don't know how long it takes for our hands to heal, but I would assume it would be, like, at least, like, four weeks, maybe? I mean, I've never broken my hand before, I wouldn't know, but that's why he, that's why they retired, didn't he? Because he broke his hand. And then before that, he did lose to Kamsa Chimea, but th that happens, you know? But Santiago Ponzanibio, he's an older guy, he's 36. I thought he was losing to Morono. I actually thought Morono was potentially on his way to winning that fight. And then he KO'd him pretty badly. And then um, he fought Mikhail Pahaya, um, arguably won that fight, and potentially even arguably won the fight against Jeff Neal, but this is going to be a striking fight. Neither of these guys are going to go for takedowns. I think Kevin Holland's going to um, kickbox it with him, use his kung fu style, put on a good fight for the fans, and um, I'm not that confident he gets the KO over Ponzi, though. Like, Jeff Neal didn't KO Ponzi Nibio. I think Pon Kevin Holland and him go to a hard-fought decision, or Kevin, Ho Kevin Holland maybe get to finish in the second or the third round. I just don't think Kevin Holland's going to run out there and just KO Ponzi just like that, you know what I mean? So, I've got Kevin Holland. Uh, it's a pretty big step up in competition from the guys that he last beat, like Tim Means and Alex Oliveira, who's not even in the UFC anymore, but, hey, i got Holland. I'm not that confident. I'm not as confident as everyone else, though. Another fight that I'm not as confident as everyone else, but I've still got the same pick, is Rob Font versus Adrian Yanez. Uh, I do have Adrian Yanez to win. I have been seriously considering the Rob Font pick, and this is why. Dude, so Rob Font was beating Marlon Vera on the feet until he wasn't. And Marlon Vera was just catching up at the end of the round, last minute, last two minutes of the round. He was catching him. He was dropping him at times. He was beating him up a little bit. So Marlon Vera was losing to Rob Font for most of the rounds. And I think Rob Font actually outlanded Marlon Vera in every single round. He lost to Jose Aldo, but that happens. Jose Aldo is, is fantastic. He beat Cody Garbrandt on the feet in the boxing fight. Not the best win to win by decision, but it's still a very good win. KO'd Marlon Moraes, um, beat Ricky Simone, and that's a very well-aging win. And Ricky Simone's on like a four or five fight win streak since then. Adrian Yanez. Finds Randy Costa, struggles a little bit in the first round. Randy Costa had a lot of success in the first round. Davey Grant, arguably loses to Davey Grant. Tony Kelly, dominates him, but that's Tony Kelly. He's not even in the UFC anymore. I'm pretty sure Tony Kelly's actually been cut. So, huge step up in competition for Yanez. This is going to be a boxing fight in the MMA gloves of the MMA cage. Probably with a few leg kicks and body kicks thrown in, but for the most part, we're going to see these boys box. And I'm picking Yanis because he's the younger guy. He's going to be faster. And also, Rob Font's just taken a lot of damage recently as well. We don't know how an almost 36-year-old Rob Font is going to come back from taking all that damage from Adrian Yanis. So, from Malam, uh, Malam Vera. But I've got Adrian Yanis. I'm going to do it as well. I'm going to pick Adrian Yanis by KO. I think he finds something in Rob Font. Maybe the second or the third round. I think you find something. He's a younger guy. He's up and coming. He's looked incredible recently. Albeit not that great against David Grant, uh, but he did beat Randy Costa by KO. He's not even in the UFC anymore again. I don't think Victor Rodriguez is in the UFC either. Gustavo Lopez isn't. There's a lot of red flags to picking Yanez. There really is, but I'm still picking him anyway by KO. But man, there's a lot of red flags there. I just think that Rob Fon is older now. He's almost 36. He's taken a lot of damage recently. He took a lot of time off, though. But Yanez is going to be faster, you know? Yanez is going to be faster. I think that's what it comes down to. And then another one. I don't see the same confidence as everyone else either. I'm picking Gilbert Burns to win this fight. I don't know if he gets the sub, though, you know, because Jorge Masvidal is going to be the better striker. He is, you know, like, he, he's going to be the better pure striker. If these guys had a kickboxing fight, Jorge Masvidal would win the kickboxing fight 10 times out of 10. But it's MMA, and Gilbert Burns will be shooting for takedowns. And Gilbert Burns, for the first time in a long time, just got a submission. He just submitted Neil Magny. By the way, Gilbert Burns is a former Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion as well, but... He just subbed Neil Magny in 2023, but before that, the last time he'd got a submission in his career was a long time ago. It was against Mike Davis in 2019. 
You know what I mean? He's not. We're not seeing Gilbert Burns go out there and just submit guys all the time, in in the UFC anyway. But and even then, Jorge Masvidal showed good takedown defense, and he just had a huge fight camp defending takedowns to prepare for Colby Covington. Now, albeit there's been a bit of a legal situation in there because Jorge Masvidal's a bit of an idiot. Um, Jorge Masvidal's been focusing on Icon FC, which is an MMA promotion he owns. He's been promoting his boxing event and all that too. But at the end of the day, man, like, he just lost to Usman twice, one of them being on short notice, but last time he won was in 2019. I've been eight years. I've got Gilbert Burns. On the feet, it's going to be fun. Masvidal could maybe find something. Masvidal could probably do something crazy, but I think Burns is going to be looking for takedowns. I think Burns is going to be looking to clinch. I think Burns, if he does get the fight to the ground, and pure BJJ, Burns is so much better at grappling than Masvidal. If he can get it to the ground and if he can kind of start to use his own jujitsu, we saw it against Neil Magny, we might be able to see it against Jorge Masvidal, but Masvidal is going to be a live dog, because if Masvidal can defend the takedowns, which I don't doubt he's going to be able to defend at least a couple takedowns, you know, he, he defended a lot of takedowns against Colby Covington the whole time, he was pretty much defending takedowns. I think Jorge Masvidal could have a lot of success on the feet in the matchup. But I've got Burns, and I've got Burns by sub, to get his second submission win since 2019. I think he gets Masvidal down. I think he may be able to get Masvidal down in the center of the octagon as well. Not just against the cage. I think he can work for something in the center of the octagon and um, really make something happen. So, yeah, give me Gilbert Burns in this fight. But if Jorge Masvidal does something crazy, I wouldn't be that surprised. Let's move on. Alex Pajaya versus Israel Arasanya 2. Oh, Alex Bahia, I picked him the last fight, I'll pick him again, and I'm pretty confident he wins. I'm pretty confident he wins. Dude, there's this narrative going on that Arasanya was up 3-1, he was up 4-0. It was arguably 2-2 going into the fifth, you know? Like, Arasanya wasn't dominated in the fight like everyone's trying to say that he was. And on top of that... Adesanya wasn't the one that was shooting the takedowns. Because everyone's like, I think Adesanya is going to initiate his wrestling a lot more in this fight. I can see Adesanya going for more takedowns. Like, he had success in the grappling in the last fight. Yes, Adesanya had success in the grappling in the last fight. But he was credited for no takedowns. That's because Alex, Alex Pahaya was shooting for takedowns. Alex Pahaya, I believe it was the second round shot for a takedown at the end of the round. And just took, took the um, round, like guaranteed the round with the takedown um, kind of sort of thing. But then I think it was the third round, he went for a takedown earlier in the round, and Adesanya was able to reverse the trip that he went for, and Adesanya ended up on top and dominated the top control from there. Alex Pahaya was the one that initiated that takedown. Alex Pahaya is the one that got the takedown in the, in the second round as well. Adesanya shot for zero takedowns in the fight. Adesanya's entire game plan was to strike. Alex Pahaya, in my opinion, the better kickboxer, was the one that was planning on initiating the uh, the grappling sequences. So if anyone's going to grapple, it probably would be Alex Fajaya again. And he's been training with Glover. Glover's been training him full time. Now that Glover's out of camp, he's been training Glover as well, preparing for Jamal Hill. Um, like obviously pr doing takedown defense for that, preparing Glover for takedown defense and all that. Uh, um, to deal with takedown defense, it's just a massive bug in my room, which is terrifying. But um, also, like, you know, I think I think Alex Pahaya is the better kickboxer as well. As I said, he beat Adesanya twice in kickboxing. You can disagree all you want in the, uh, on the first decision, but kickboxing is scored a little bit differently, and Alex Pahaya was the more aggressive fighter. And Alex Pahaya was an alcohol addict at the time. He was an alcoholic. He was dealing with his own personal problems. In the second fight, Alex Pahaya took that fight on short notice, put him out stiff, you know? And the fight in MMA that they just had a few months ago, the whole time, Alex Pahaya was pretty much walking him down and Adesanya was up against the cage, kind of sidestepping. Adesanya the whole time was pretty much trying to avoid the dynamite that's in Pahaya's hands. I don't think he's going to avoid it for much longer. I think Pahaya knocks him out within two rounds. I think Pahaya gets a KO within two rounds over Israel Adesanya. And I don't think he just TKOs him up against the cage like the last one. I think we've seen him put him out. Like he did Andreas Michaelidis. I'm seeing Alex Bahia left hook or right hook. Doesn't matter. Either of them work. 
over Adesanya within two rounds in this fight here. Adesanya has all the mental disadvantages going into the fight. Because into, the, into the, the, the MMA fight, the whole time, he was saying stuff like, those fights were in kickboxing, this is MMA. This is MMA. And Alex Pahey just beat you in MMA. And he's beating you in kickboxing as well. And also, this is a situation with Adesanya. If he loses this, what does he do? Because he can't move up to 205. Because in my opinion, this is Alex Pahey's last fight at 185. That's a hot take that I've got. I don't think Alex Pahey wants to do the weight cut anymore at 185. He's almost 36 years old. I think Alex Pahey, now that Glover's gone from 205... Pahaya can now take over 205, do his own thing at 205, you know? Maybe not take over 205, because there's going to be some nightmare matchups for him at 205. But, um, I think Pahaya moves up to 205 pounds after this fight, and we see Robert Whitaker versus Chimaya for the 185 title, Robert Whitaker versus Duplessis for the 185 title. I think Pahaya will vacate the belt and move up to 205 pounds. He's almost 36, he's massive for 185. He's not a small dude. He's not going to want to make the weight forever. He's not a young guy at all. I've got Pahaya by KO within the first two rounds. I think he catches Adesanya. I'm pretty confident in it too. The first MMA fight that they had, the fight that they only had, what, like four months ago now, where Adesanya was rocked all over the place. He didn't get KO'd, but he was rocked all over the place. Adesanya was skirting the cage. Alex Pahaya was walking him down. Adesanya was trying to avoid the shots of Pahaya. Pahaya is the more powerful guy. Adesanya hurt him in the first round, I know. Pahaya is the much more powerful guy. I don't see Adesanya just putting Pahaya's lights out. I see Pahaya knocking Adesanya out cold within two rounds. And it's coming from someone from New Zealand. But to be fair, I live in New Zealand. I've never met an Adesanya fan in my life. But hey, I think Pahaya puts him out. Puts the lights out. Knocks him out dead. So give me Pahaya in this matchup.